So now that we're back from Texas, it's time to get started fixing everything that got torn up, like the Suburban shift linkage, which is evidently a bigger project than I initially thought. We also need to pull the oil pan down off the Nova and check the rod and the main bearings, and of course we've got a lot of orders to get shipped out, including the nitrous kit that we gave away last month. All, not to mention, yard work. Hi. What in the hell do you have Kenny doing? Cleaning up the tree line. Why? It's, it's terrible. Who cares? I do. I look out my window and I see all the deadness and brush and stuff when you mow it whacks you in the face. He's fixing all that. What the hell do you know about mowing? <laughs> I see you out there going like this. <laughs> Now I generally try and keep the guys busy doing important work, but then Vicky comes along behind me and redirects them. Well, I'm stranded on the side of the road in Pataskla because this stupid gas tank situation doesn't work right. And what you're about to witness is a perfect example of what happens when Vicky redirects my guys. Bucko, how can we have this big tank and this big tank and Vicky's out of gas. That's because everybody gets in it and just drives it. But it says it has a half a tank. So the gas gauge has never worked right since the day we got the truck started. And the problem with the tanks is that one tank is siphon and the other tank is gravity fed. This valve was supposed to be the solution, but it never got installed. Anyway, Buckwheat got her back up and running. Kenny continued to work on the yard and Uncle Bob showed up to check out the rod and the main bearings in the Nova. After the engine was given a clean bill of health by Uncle Bob, Bob helped Billy torque the main and the rod bearings back down, and I went out to help Kenny clean up the rest of this mess in the side yard. Otherwise, poor old Kenny's gonna be working on cutting his dead pine tree up for the next six months. I picked up the trunk with the excavator and carried it out to the burn pile and carefully laid it down in there to let it burn. Meanwhile, in the shop, Bob and Billy were just about done working on the Nova and were ready to fire the thing up, except for there's only one problem. Billy needs a couple cases of motor oil and A1 Auto Parts is already closed down in Buckeye Lake. It just so happens that Mark had given me a key to the store about a year ago, just in case we happen to need something after hours. Now, I've only ever attempted to go down there and get something out of the store after hours one other time, and it ended with the police and fire department on scene when the alarm went off. Yeah, I did. So far, so good. I've managed to disarm the alarm system and no police or fire trucks have showed up yet. Now I've just got to find the oil and follow strict instructions from Mark so that I don't end up arrested or in the back of a police car. All right, now what? Uh, okay. Straight 50 or whatever Billy uses, that nitro 50 or whatever. Okay, so you got to go back to the back there by the flywheel. Okay. Yeah. All right, yeah, straight 50. I'm going to get two cases. Okay. All right. All right. A burp. Just go ahead and get both cases before you go out. <laughs> All right, I got two cases. I hope it's the same shit. Very look. Well, it's, yeah, it's in the same damn pile. <laughs> All right, put me down for two cases of oil. Now, what do I got to do to rearm this damn thing? Okay, are you going to go ahead and put the oil in the truck first, or you want to go ahead and arm it and then leave? Just make this <laughs> simple. Go back over to the Mm-hmm. It says arm away. God, Kenny's trying to call. <laughs> All right, what do I got to do now? He needs a couple filters also. Oh, shit. <laughs> Kenny, huh. oh. you just made me hang Wait, up. Wait, but he's something. telling you he's telling you he needs more stuff. Isn't there filters there at the shop? No, we use the last one. Oh, uh. <laughs> hang on. Now I gotta call Chumpy back. <laughs> God bless it. Get 
Kenny called me. He needs oil filters. Now where's that shit at? <laughs> for the, for the, truck the, the Nova. Nova. Yeah, I see. Okay, so go to the to the end down walk like you're going to the counter. Right at the beginning of the I can't see a damn thing. <laughs> um, but, all right, fifty one oh sixty one R. Yep, there you go. I got one filter here I see. Okay. Fifty one oh sixty one R. I only see one of them. Is there any sixty R's? Yeah, there's a sixty R over here. Oh. Hang on. <laughs> There's two of the 60s and 161. I'm going to take one of each. Okay. All right. All right. Now help me get out of this freaking contraption <laughs> before I get arrested. The last time I pulled this trip. <laughs> Now what? Oh. Now, 58 oh. seconds. Go oh. right <laughs> Holy shit, the countdown's on. Uh-oh. Hurry! I'm trying! <laughs> Hurry! Alright, close that door. <laughs> the cops are coming. <laughs> Congratulations. He squad or police there, so. Well, not yet. <laughs> I don't hear any sirens. I think we did it. Alright, that's beautiful. Alright, thanks, Mark. Who else would put up with you? You would think that my son would think ahead and say, you know what, I'm going to fire this car up tonight. Maybe I might need oil. Well, good thing he has you to help. <laughs> Look, you got A1 in the trunk. Just in case. Honey, you can't leave A1 not refrigerated. Why not? So that brings us to Friday morning, and work continues on Vicky's Suburban as Buckwheat tries to replace the shift cable in the dash. While Jeremy's working on that, I loaded up that tire we blew out down in Arkansas, took it down to Bowman Goodyear, and dropped it off to have it replaced. After that, I figured it was a good time to take this Mustang down to Buckeye Lake to visit Mark and have him pull the paint codes on it to see if he can match the paint so that we can replace the rear bumper cover and reshoot the car from the belt line down. The silver on the car is really faded bad, and Billy wants to get that replaced before we do the giveaway on it. Well, what do you have to say for yourself today? Oh, I've been beat up already. I, I can't say anything. Oh, you're having one of those days? I am. Yeah. Well, you're about to have a worse one now. Oh, that's great. I need some paint for a Mustang. Oh, well, we can do that. Oh, that cheers you up? Oh, yeah, we can do that. That's not a problem. <laughs> we can do that. So. Well, come out here and look at this mess I got. Well, let me get my camera. Mark uses some fancy whiz-bang camera to go out there and scan the paint on the car so that the computer can match the paint color exactly to what we already have. After that, I came back to the house and it was time to get started working on the Malibu because I noticed it's got a little vibration in the drivetrain now after we went to XRP and hit it with all that nitrous. It turns out the drive shaft's been rubbing on the floor pan underneath. I don't know why that's happened. It shouldn't do that. The only thing I can figure is the cross member is like a wet noodle in it and it allows the transmission to flex up and down. While we had the car up on the lift, I went ahead and soaked everything down with Jack's Wax Super Citrus and then hit it with a power washer to get all the road grime off. I was finishing up on the Malibu just about lunchtime and Vicky brought Kane's chicken back for everybody. We all came into the office and had lunch while the Malibu drip dried off on the lift. I took a few minutes and took a towel and dried off all the suspension components, the aluminum shocks, and of course the wheels. And then it was time for me and Jeremy to head up to the farm to help dad move the combine out of the field. Dad's old gleaner is still sitting out in the field where we left it when the clutch went out of it last fall when we were running beans. But now that it's time to get ready for planting season, dad needs this thing moved out of the way. So Jeremy and I hooked to it with a skid loader and pulled it back out of the way so dad can continue working ground. Dad really enjoys getting his old two-cylinder John Deere's out every spring and working ground with them. It's more therapeutic than anything else, but it's definitely good for him to keep moving.
Once we had that combine moved out of the way and we were sure that dad was cleared for takeoff to finish up the front field, I headed back home to check on Billy and see how he's doing working on the Mustang. Now the Mustang that we're gonna give away hasn't been to the track yet since we've owned it. And we've made some changes to the car and we wanna go out and make a couple little test hits tonight out on the street just to make sure everything works okay before we take it to the track for test and tune tomorrow. Now this is gonna be the first time we've ever tried to launch this car and it doesn't currently have a boost controller. So it's tricky to turn the thing down and get it to go down the street without making it blow the tires off. Billy short shifts it just to keep it from knocking the tires off as the boost rolls in, but it looks like to me, everything's gonna be all right for Saturday. So I fire the car up and drive it down to trails for their first Saturday test and tune of the season. By the time I got down there, Billy had already picked out a pit spot out back on a concrete pad, and Vicky made it there just a few minutes after I did. Now this is the very first time National Trail Raceway has been open for this season, and they're busy out there working on the track dragging it and spraying it, trying to get it in good enough condition for all the bracket cars that have come out to test today. Now, typically we're not really concerned with track conditions. We're usually set up to go down it without any glue at all. But today's a little bit different. Billy's gonna try and make a couple little test hits on the Nova and Allison's got her dart here today too. She's gonna be making her very first nitrous passes and we're gonna be making the very first passes on the Mustang on a drag radio. Billy pulls the car into the burnout box and does his first burnout, which is very light, very short. The car hit the tires a little bit harder than he expected, and it blew the tires off on the starting line. So he made some adjustments to the tune-up and then brought the Mustang right back up into the staging lanes to try and squeak in one more pass before they shut the lanes down this afternoon. Since the car currently doesn't have a boost controller, we're just letting the car run on gate pressure, which is about 22 pounds of boost. We got there, Slim. Well, I took it to 330 and it went 389 to the 330 which it was good for a 590, but I had to let out because it started to lay over. I felt it lay over. And I'm kind of looking at the data log and it seems like the fuel pressure is not rising at a one-to-one -one rate. Hmm. It's only rising 10 when it should be rising 20. Hmm. I'm wondering if it's the regulator or the fuel pump, hmm. but okay. it seems like it's, it's running out of fuel. So right before I let out of it, it was 11.5. 11.7, went 12.0, 12.2, and then I let out. Okay. And I could feel it start to lay over, and it was trending lean, and I'm wide open. So I'm not sure if it's the regulator or it's the fuel pump. I'm going to kind of lean towards the fuel pump. It might be tired. Okay. Um, but other than that, I mean, it went a 138, 60 foot, <laughs> 389 to the 330. And went a 628 letting off at half track. Jesus so, Christ. It's definitely a five second car. We just need to figure out this fuel issue. We'll get it. Yeah, we'll get it. It's going to take a little time, but we're getting there. After the test and tune at Trails on Saturday, we all came back to the house and just kind of relaxed for a little bit. We're still kind of drugged down from that trip to Texas, and we really haven't recovered from it just yet. They were planning on having a test and tune to get on Sunday, and I was going to take the Malibu down there. But unfortunately, the weather forecast prohibited that from happening. So instead, we just kind of focused on trying to catch up on some rest, and Rob wanted to pull his car in the shop to change the transmission in it to try and get it ready for the next weekend of racing so that he can maybe enter the car in hard tire class. But we've also got some pretty big news. We've got somebody coming to spend the week with us. Every time, as soon as I start talking, she does it every time. I, I don't know how she does it. And we've been knows. out here for 20 minutes. Yeah, we've been out here working. But now is But now is the time. Okay. <laughs> you want to tell everybody who's coming to visit with us? Jimmy Dale. Jimmy Dale is coming to town. Our Texas buddy is coming to Ohio. 
he has got a problem. He's got more than one problem. He has multiple problems. But the biggest problem that Jimmy Dale faces is that his engine is wounded. Suffering. Suffering, yes. yes. Tess put it to uh, the test. Yep. <laughs> down in Texas. Yep. And as you probably have already seen in Miss Midnight Mavericks video, mm -hmm. she won one class, runner up in the other. Mm -hmm. She entered three classes. She was... Yeah, she was. It. Yeah, she was racing Literally. her butt off, <laughs> and uh, so uh, the Mustang, known as Magic Johnson. There you go. You got it. But not the basketball player. Don't start. Oh. We don't need to get into that story. <laughs> it has nothing to do with Magic Johnson, the basketball player. <laughs> but that's a story for a different time. Okay. <sighs> okay. So he's coming to visit, and the engine in Magic Johnson is wounded. And Uncle Bob's coming to the rescue. Yes. So Jimmy's on his way here. Mm -hmm. And once he gets here, he's going to probably go into a coma upstairs from the drive. Just like we did. Just like we did. We mm -hmm. were zomb have been zombies. Uh, yeah. yeah. So Jimmy's going to come. Uh, he, he, I don't, we, don't, we don't know what time he's going to be here. It could no, be 3 o'clock in, in the morning. Didn't and he say he was in Missouri last? He's been in Missouri for a long time. Well, he's making his way. He yeah. said he would get here in the wee hours of the morning. Yes. So. so Jimmy Dale is on his way, and once he gets here, we're going to pull the engine out of Magic mm -hmm. Johnson, and we're taking up to Uncle Bob's, yep. and we're going to try and help Bob go through this thing, mm -hmm. tear it apart, clean everything up, bore the block. Bob's already got pistons and rings there ready to go, probably even a new set of connecting rods. And, uh, what about yeah. the transmission? Well, we're, I haven't, you jumped forward on me there. I haven't even oh. talked to Dion yet. Oh, but my new hey, trans Dion. yeah so <laughs> i may take i may take jimmy's power glide to Dion to have him freshen it up mm -hmm. because my new 700r4 is done for the malibu and i need to go oh. pick it up so i may pull the 700r out of my malibu take it up there drop it off pick up my new one bring it back so yeah. we've got I'm a whole lot of stuff to do and and rob's car is still on a lift in here yep uh getting a transmission swap done in it so we got a lot of stuff to get done this week. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of good content. Yes. Okay, so you would like to talk about our trip to Texas. Well, yeah, because, okay, so you did a video right after Texas, but I didn't get a chance to, like, talk oh, about my plane good ride. Grief. I flew for the first time. I know, you flew for the first time. It you was did good. so cool. You didn't get diarrhea or anything. No, it was, I would fly again in a heartbeat. Yeah. So you got to show everybody, like, I took video out the window. It was so, so cool. It was, and when we landed back in Columbus, the sun was setting, and the oh, like over Columbus, you could see the um, OSU Stadium, like the shoe. It was so cool. Yep. Yeah. You had a really good time. Yeah, and so the people in Texas were awesome. Yes. I had Carrie and Addie there to help me. Addie Thank you guys very much. Oh you guys were such a huge help. I'd have been lost without them, so they helped so much, and uh, just the people were awesome. I I can't wait to go back. I I hope we go back later this year, maybe. Okay. So. So that's going to do it for tonight, guys. We're going to get this video. Wait a minute. Oh, no. You've got a list. Well, are we going to talk about... You've got something else to talk about. I almost forgot. What? Look, I have a new girly shirt. Oh, that's cool. It's called Raspberry Heather, the color. Oh, wow. yeah. Raspberry so, Heather. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and it's black glitter. So that's something new. new I've got on the, the website. baseball tees on the website again. And so everybody who makes a purchase from April 1st to April 30th, mm -hmm. anything, uh... Wait a minute. I just yep. got that. That's my new one. No. You do this every month. You really? give away my signs faster than There's I can get them in. There's another one on the way. Call That's what you always say. Why can't I just keep one of them? <laughs> anyway. Oh, and in addition to this, we're going to give away some signed posters, too. So. Okay. We'll just pull order numbers. I've had people asking for posters of the Malibu. Yeah. It's Should time. we do that? Let's do it. Like, I wanted to wait until the Malibu had actually done something, like, worth mentioning. Well, it won you a chain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it did, didn't it? Well, it won Addie a chain. She's got it. Yeah, all right. So maybe maybe we'll do a poster of the Malibu down at uh, Yellow Belly. How about yeah. that? Let's do signed Malibu posters from Yellow Belly. Okay, we'll work and on we'll, that. And we'll draw order numbers for the month of April orders, and uh, you'll have a chance to win one. All right. Is that it? I think so. All right. Good night, everybody.
folks. Diesel stop number two. Hey, Jimmy's in Joplin, so he probably ain't stopping, baby. Tell him. <laughs>